Uh, we're going to be joined by Dominic Reyes. He meets John Jones Saturday night, UFC 247. The last time we had Dominic Reyes on the show, this is what he said. Can I just ask, because you, you're tickling my fancy here, how would you beat John Jones? What's the, what's, what's the, 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 the path? Do you see it? Oh, I see the path. I'm going to knock him out. Oh, my. You know he's never been stopped before. He's never really been beaten. Neither have I. That's a good point. So you say right here and now, October 21st, 2019, you will knock out John Jones if you fight him. Absolutely. I will knock out John Jones. When we fight, when he stops hiding behind his management, I will knock him out. And that was three and a half months ago. This Saturday, Dominic Reyes gets an opportunity to prove that point, to make good on that prediction. He meets John Jones, and he's kind enough to join us right now via the magic of Skype. Dominic, my man, how are you? What's up, Ariel? Where are you now? I'm in Houston right now. So you are in Houston, site of Saturday night's fight. Can you describe five days before the biggest fight of your life, uh, a moment that can change your life forever? You could be the first man to defeat John Jones, and if you do it the way in which you predicted three and a half months ago, everything changes for you. Can you describe how you are feeling? What's going on here? What's going on here? Uh, my body's primed and ready to go. My mind is sharper than ever. I'm just ready to step in the cage, man. There's, there's not much else left for me to say. I just got to do what I got to do and uh, take this man out. Any nerves? I mean, there's always nerves. It's a, it's a fight, you know. It's not, it's not something casual. Um, it's a big athletic competition. And uh, I just focus those nerves, laser focus them into something positive, which is uh, my power, my strength, you know, taking them out. Uh, I, I feel like this is a silly question, but I'll, I'll still ask it. Do you still feel like you are going to knock him out on Saturday? I do. I really do. I very much do. I look, look forward to seeing him on his back. Where does that confidence come from for a guy who's hardly been hit uh, or rocked? Why do you feel like you're not just going to win, but you're going to knock him out? I just feel it, man. It's one of those things you can't really explain. You know, it's had many visions of this fight. It keeps going the same way. He's looking down. He's he's. I'm looking down on him. He's on his back. Um, it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. I, I don't really make predictions that often, but I feel it, man. I said I was going to knock out Weidman. I felt that. I feel the same way about this guy. He mentioned, I don't know if you saw the interview that we aired earlier, but he mentioned that, you know, he saw you post stuff of, of like your name at sports center. And it seems like you're just happy to be there. Like this is all new to you, you know, the bright lights. Oh, this is great. But he's been there time and again, he's been there for nine years. Is there a part of you that feel like, like this is like all very new and you know, the moment is big. And is there any worry that the moment will be too big? Like how, how are you, how do you respond to when he says things like that about you taking those pictures and, and being excited about getting this kind of shine? This is man. I haven't lost the ability to feel, you know, there's milestones in our lives that we can be proud of. I don't have to be too cool to take a picture of something big like that. You know, it's, it's very, very exciting. You know, this doesn't happen every day uh, for him. Maybe, you know, maybe he's downplayed, you know, all the awesome things that have happened in his life, but uh, not me, man. I enjoy my life. I enjoy the moments and uh, I'm not going to sit here and be, Oh, I'm too cool to take a photo of my ESPN set, you know, but uh, that's just him. You know, he lives his life how he's going to live it. You know, he judges people. He's very judgmental, very uh, kind of callous towards the world. Um, I'm happy. I enjoy my life. And uh, yeah, that's my response to that. You know, your demeanor is a lot different than the last time you were on. Of course, last time you were on, you were coming off the Weidman win. You were happy. The fight is over. There's, there's a relief. There's celebration, all that stuff. But like, you're like a stone cold, you know, I, I, you know like you're just like <laughs> very focused right now. I, I've, I've not seen you like this before. Is this common for you on the Monday before the fight? Like it's, it's almost like a no, no nonsense Dominic Reyes right now. Yeah, man. It's the calm before the storm. I'm, I'm very, very focused. I know exactly what I need to do. Just put me in there, man. Let me go. You see his tweets about you this morning? Um, I did. I woke up to it. I kind of laughed. <laughs> this guy, man. He doesn't. He doesn't stop. He's, he's looking bipolar or something, man. <laughs> uh, my 
my response to that is, you know, man, like he tweeted something about being uh, uh, confident in yourself or something like that. And I was like, hey, man, I believe in myself. What do you want me to do? Like, there's no pleasing you. <laughs> Just uh, honestly, man, I don't know. I think he's trying to make make something in his head or something. I don't know what he's doing, man. I don't really give a shit. I'm, it doesn't change anything. I mean, he can say what he wants. He could try to belittle me. He could try to come at my athletic background and things like this, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. I don't, I don't see why. I don't know. I just don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> One of the things he tweeted about you was beating up on cans has got him convinced he's a better athlete than most of the world. If he was so badass, he would have won the California State Wrestling Championships. He would have went Division One. He would have at least made a practice squad for the NFL. This man is delusional. So th- he knows your history, right? He knows your background. Oh, this this guy, this guy, he's in love with me, man. I mean, he studied every aspect of my entire life, and he thinks he knows me. That's. That's why I laugh because he he honestly believes he knows me as a as a man and as a, as a human being, and he has no idea. Like it's it's pretty amusing, but to say I've beat up cans, you know, that's just that's just disrespectful to the sport in general and the, and the guys he's fought. And you know, I thought him and Weidman were friends, so I mean that's that's really messed up. Um, you're gonna go out here and d- disrespect everybody in a division. Uh, that's cool, man. I mean that's gonna it's gonna make you you know real likable. A lot of guys you know, your legacy is going to be, you know, great. I mean, that's, that's why he's not ever going to be, you know, on the Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali level, no matter how many wins he gets, no matter how many titles he wins, he's just, he can't get out of his own way, man. He's just not a good person. Do you feel like he respects you or do you feel like he's just kind of looking, you know, he's being asked about heavyweight and he has those plans. And to his credit, when I did try to press him on the heavyweight stuff, he just said, you know, he said Dominic Grace is next but he was talking about Stipe and moving up and all that stuff. Do you feel like he just kind of views you as another guy or do you think he really truly respects you and fears you? He has no choice. He doesn't have a choice. He has to respect me. He knows that. He's not, he's not dumb. He knows if he doesn't respect me, he 100% will be sleeping. I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a very forgiving sport. I mean, he's, he's had a lot of title fights. He's not stupid. So... I mean, he has no choice but to respect me. Does he want to respect me? No, absolutely not. He doesn't want to respect me, but he has to. Um, So there's that. I mean, regardless of if he does or he doesn't, (laughs) I'm still coming with the heat, man. Uh, Do you subscribe to the notion that he has trouble against taller opponents? I don't know, man. I mean, it's almost like a a fight-to-fight deal with this guy. Either, you know, he'll either show up or he won't. I mean, it's like... If he's having turmoil in his life or not, it's I don't know if it has to do with height or not or whatever, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it matters. Like I said, all that matters is Saturday night. They have everything before means nothing. Our our path, both our paths mean zero. You know, we're here. It's fight week. <laughs> this is it. We're, I'm here. I'm ready to rumble, man. It's it's, it's nothing else matters. It's Saturday night. That's all that matters. So you will most likely square off at least a couple of times uh, this week, maybe at media day on, on Thursday, of course, the ceremonial face-offs. But you did get a chance to square off with him in December in Las Vegas. What did you make of his whole demeanor at that press conference, the way he was talking about you, towards you, the face-off when he got up in your face? What did you take away from that? I don't know, man. It was interesting. It was very interesting. Um, I said earlier in the week that I thought it was going to be different. I thought he was gonna be I guess it was I guess I thought he was gonna be more uh, I don't know professional I guess you would say but he's a very emotional kind of guy I mean, his emotions and his ego controls him controls his whole life so I mean I don't know man I I wish it was a little bit shocking I didn't, I didn't expect his ego to be that that strong in his life but it makes sense for who he is you didn't expect him to come at you like that you didn't think he would try to you know get under your skin or talk smack or anything like that you thought he would be a hundred percent cordial towards you no I, I knew he wouldn't be cordial I mean he's never cordial he does little jabs I knew I, I kind of knew he was going to do what he was going to do but not it was just weird the way he approached it was just it was just weird I, I can't really explain these things everybody wants me to explain these these feelings and these things mm-hmm. I can't explain it it's just I I'm pretty in tune with the universe I'm really in tune with energies and things like this and I don't know man it was just it didn't feel 
like some kind of he didn't feel like like some kind of like unstoppable force like this this john jones dude like monster dude he, he mm-hmm. just felt like a guy just, just a guy man like that's all i could really say so in a weird way that whole experience the exchange the face off all that actually gave you more confidence after experiencing his his energy you actually left feeling better about the fight absolutely mm. absolutely yeah interesting every time i yeah it's crazy every time i hear this guy talk i feel better about the fight it's <laughs> why, ridiculous why is that because man he's like i said he's controlled by his ego and his emotions and everything he says is trying to it's like trying to convince himself he's trying to convince the world that he's this guy that he's not like Everything he does is to try to prove that he's someone that he's not. It's really weird, man. It's it's like he's like, it's like I said, it's like he's bipolar or something. There's like there's two sides to this dude, and he's constantly battling the other side, and it's it's crazy. It's just crazy. It's one just thing crazy that person. one thing that he he mentioned a couple times in the press conference was all you have is a left hand, straight left, left hand, straight left. That's all you got. And I was wondering if that was actually a good thing for you that he brought that up. Like a I would imagine you don't you don't believe that that all you have is the left hand, but then maybe are you saying to yourself, "Oh, okay, so now I'm just going to work on something else, and he won't see it coming"? Or do you think he's playing tricks on you and is trying to get you to go the opposite way and not use your left hand? Like, how did you how did you how did you actually process him continuing to talk about just your left hand? Um, yeah, if, if, exactly like you're saying. If he wants to believe I just have a left hand, then <laughs> please, please do that. I mean, ridiculous i think john what i'm what happens is i think john just tries to belittle he just tries to constantly belittle his opponents he tries to make them feel lesser than him by by leaps and bounds like he his whole thing is like you're lesser than me you're not better than me i'm better than you you're nothing i'm everything i'm john jones you're nothing it's like that's constantly doing that all you have is this oh you're this blah blah blah. Uh, i mean honestly i feel like if i if i I believed in a different God. I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. He would try to come at that too. I'm, I'm mm. going to be honest with you with that. Like everything about this guy, like if you're not on that, like you don't agree with me in everything or you're not saying I'm, I'm the best ever and you should be scared. Why aren't you scared? Like it's a constant, like him, like trying to tell you how you should feel about him and trying to belittle you. It's, it's, it's really crazy, man. And so here we are, you know, he's, He's getting ready to fight you, and this is a big fight and all that stuff. And, and you know, anytime he fights, I think it's special. He's he's on the verge of making history. If he wins this fight, uh, he'll have more victories in a, in a title fight than anyone in, in UFC. However, there are some people, especially after the last fight against Thiago Santos, who believe he's slowing down, uh, who believe that he's not, you know, going for the 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 finish as much as possible and 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 he's just trying to take you know the safe way he was very he, he was very much criticized after that Santos fight do you believe that he is slowing down do you believe that he is starting to expose himself that he's not as dominant as he once was no, I think it's pretty much the same guy man I don't think he's like exposing himself it's just different opponents I mean he's getting guys to actually move now I mean he's it's just it, the game's changing, and uh, to to have that like complete dominance is it's like it's changed. The, the game's changed. I think we're getting better. Uh, the competition's getting better, and and he's he's just making excuses for why it's he's not getting finishes and things like this. But to be honest with you, I hope I get you know the best version of John Jones. You know, I don't want, I don't want any excuses from this guy either. Oh, uh, I wasn't at my best. I'm slowing down. Blah blah blah. Like. No, oh, man, I want you to come out guns blazing. I want you to be in the best athletic shape of your life. I want you to be, you know, I want the best John Jones. I don't, I don't, I didn't, I'm not doing this to fight a, a weakened John Jones. I'm doing this to fight the best John Jones there is. You know, I want to be the best. Hmm. So I want to fight the best. And if he's not at his best, then like, it's a disservice to myself. Like, I, I'm not scared of this guy. One, one ounce. Like, I want, I want to see your best, buddy. Your spot reminds me a lot of Chris Weidman when he fought Anderson Silva for the first time, UFC 162, many moons ago. Undefeated, but a lot of people didn't know who he was. Anderson was the king, and then he shocks the world. And Chris said leading up to that fight, I'm planning for two straight fights against Anderson. We're going to fight him this time. We're going to beat him, and then there'll be an immediate rematch. Do you view this the same way? Like, do you think, all right, this is the beginning of two straight fights against John Jones. I'm going to knock him out, and then we're going to have to rematch because he's been champion for so long? 
Well, yes. That's, I do believe that. Um, and it's kind of crazy how this all worked out, right? Like, Weidman knocked out Silva. You know, beat him twice. It was it was amazing for him. And then I take out Weidman. You know, I kind of I kind of took the juice. I, I I got the juice right now, man. Um, <laughs> I got it. I, I'm ready to go. Like that power that once was is now in my hands, and uh, it's my time. You mentioned uh, late last week um, that Kobe Bryant was your your favorite athlete growing up. You weren't a big sports fan or didn't idolize a lot of athletes, but that was your guy. And of course, everyone's still like it. Still feels surreal to me that um, that he's no longer with us. And what happened on uh, Sunday of last week with his daughter and the seven other people who were uh, in that hol- helicopter—it's just—it's absolutely mind-numbing. And because he meant so much to you, and because he had the Mamba mentality, and because he overcame a lot throughout his career, in a weird way, have you taken what has happened to him and and used that as inspiration? Are, are you almost doing this with that mentality in mind? Are you doing this for him? How are you using? The, the the heartbreak of what happened to him eight days ago and internalizing that going into this fight. Yeah, I mean, that's it, man. I mean, it, it kind of reignited, you know, like everything, like the whole Mamba mentality, like where that where he came from, like what he taught me over the years. I kind of got away from it. I kind of forgot about it in a sense, but I lived my life that way. Um, It, came, it became a part of me. Um, And now it, it all got reignited, like, like right back on it like I can't I can't explain it it's like everything happens for a reason man the universe works in really weird ways God works in really weird ways man and uh it just feels like it's all lining up man it's all lining up I can't there's really no words for it man I just feel it I feel it all around me I feel it within me I feel so much stronger I feel mentally like unshakable like there's nothing just nothing that can mess with me right now all this like John stuff and all that. It's just, I just find it funny like, that he's resorting to all these cheap, cheap, tra- cheap tactics. You know, it's, it's like, bro, we're going to fight regardless. Like you don't need to hype yourself up. You, you don't need to try to get an emotional response. I mean, maybe you do for you, but it's, it's, it's deep within me. And I'm, I'm like, I feel like a completely new man. I'm completely focused, very, very focused and we'll see what happens. How is it? I, I don't. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I, I promise all of you, um, I'm bringing everything I have, my entire being. I'm not. I'm not going to settle for anything less. By the way, I was just curious because after that uh, media scrum, I, I believe you went to Staples Center, right? And and you saw some of the memorials. What was that like? And how did you feel after you were, you know, you were in the midst of all of that? Uh, it was incredibly powerful. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the amount of support and love and the amount of people he touched, you know, it's, it's, it's truly amazing, you know, and it's, it's, it definitely was something that, that hurt, you know, the entire city of Los Angeles and, you know, many people around the world, but you could feel, you could feel the, the power, like you're just walking around that place and you feel every step you take, like, it's like, you could feel his energy there. It was, it was really, really powerful. And now Apple Valley is getting brought into all of this, right? It's become, uh, it's become part of the story as well. I feel like you want to represent Apple Valley, you know, in addition to everything else, because it's become part of the trash talk too. This, this athlete from Apple Valley, how dare he think that he could take me down? Yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, like I said, he's just out here disrespecting everyone and everything. You know, with with no like, there's a lot of really good people that live out in Alpha Valley. You know, and you're gonna you're gonna sit here and just disrespect people and where we come from and what we do. Like, I'm not I'm not trashing you know your upbringing, where you came from, and you know your failed attempts at whatever you did. You know, like it's, it's cheap, man. It's real cheap, and it's, uh, whatever, man. If you want to resort to that, and like I said, man, that's why you'll never truly be great. Last thing. Last time you were on, you said knockout. This time, you want to give us a round? No, nah, man, I'm, I'm going to win. Uh, I'm not even going to say knockout anymore. I, I, my hand's going to raise. I, my hand's going to be raised, period. Like, I don't care how I do it. I don't care how God decides for me to get this done. I'm getting it done, though. Hand raise. All right. I can't wait. Thanks for doing this, Dominic. I know it's very busy before 
uh, the fight five days out, UFC 247, biggest fight of your life. I, I really appreciate you coming on, and I'm looking forward to the fight, and I wish you nothing but the best on Saturday night. Thank you so much, Ariel. Have a great day, man. Same to you. Wow. Imagine that. Imagine seven days from right now, we're living in a world where Dominic Grace knocks out John Jones and is the new champion. Everyone will just absolutely lose their minds, right? I mean, what a moment. That'll be one of the, the greatest moments in UFC history, one of the most memorable moments in UFC history. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.